Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we are over in Mississippi with my buddy Clark Easterling at Windy Hill Foundry, and uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of foundry work today. Came over a couple of days ago, Clark's been having a little event out here with some YouTubers and so forth, and uh, did have been doing some casting, also been doing a bunch of uh, shop improvements. Clark's doing a lot of work to his shop. Yes, and uh, it started off. The, the intention was to be doing the molding the first day like we would usually do, but Keith took off working in here, uh, trying to knock out some construction work along with some wiring, and before you knew it, everybody else was pitching in, and so we didn't really get started on the molding and the pouring end of it until the second, second day. But I can tell you guys, Keith Rucker is a hard worker. <laughs> he has... And it, he stayed through Saturday and Sunday after the event to help me a lot more. And we have really knocked out a lot of stuff. So I want to really thank him for that. He, he's, a, he's a very hard worker, very good friend of mine, and, and I'm honored to have him as uh, someone that I consider very close. Well, thank you, Clark. And uh, you'll be doing a video on your channel with some of the shop improvement stuff coming up. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to do much of the video of everybody here. I did, I did shoot some, but uh, but you can yeah. show the end results. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that'll be coming up soon. And I want to, uh, I'm, I need to do a, a special thanks to everybody that was here on that channel. So yeah, and uh, but today what we got is a, uh, a prototype pattern that we're going to cast for an 18 inch straight edge you guys know i do the straight edges i've got a nine inch version and a 12 inch version that clark casts for me by the way even though those are not currently up on the store we do have a few of them in stock and hopefully going to have some more in stock if you're interested in those you can contact me by my email which is right down here below that's the best way to do it right now uh, but we are trying to get this 18 inch one in production. So what we've got here is we, we modeled this up or I modeled it up in CAD and Fusion 360. My friend, uh, Mike Wiggins at the Backyard Machine Shop, he's got a CNC router and uh, he actually routed out the pattern in wood. And uh, like I said, this is a prototype pattern. We're just trying today to see how it's gonna mold make sure it's going to be good. As soon as we got it, are sure everything's good, he's actually going to make one of these out of a special material called pattern board. It's made specifically for making patterns out of. It's kind of a plastic material, really dense, that's again designed for patterns. Uh, but this one in wood, is, we're, just, we're just molding it today to make sure it's going to work all right and uh, hopefully uh, have these in production soon. And hopefully the details showing up. We probably should have showed these before I covered them in oil and graphite. But, yeah. Uh, but I think anyway we're gonna we're gonna get started now. All right. So let's get the camera set up. We'll show you the molding process. We're gonna actually pour one, and uh, just like I said, just make sure everything is gonna be working right, and then we'll proceed with the the real patterns and uh, hopefully get them in production. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do it. All right. All right, so the first thing I want to do is, is put my finest sand down uh, around any of the detail. Any faces that are going to be up, we can easily do that now. Uh, just concentrating the finest sand here. And then once we get that captured with this uh, grain size, we'll move up and Speed it up. And we got quite a bit of graphite on this. What I did, I took these patterns and coated them with gear oil and uh, to try to get the graphite to, to stick to the finish a little better. These patterns are made out of wood, actually maple. And... Um they're not the smoothest in the world. We didn't spend a whole lot of time sanding them. Like I said, this pattern is probably just going to get used this one time. Uh, it's really just more for testing. But uh, the graphite will kind of help prevent the sand from sticking. Yep. Now they call this green sand even though it's black, right? Yep. Explain what green sand is. Well, there's, <laughs> you know, there's 
several different definitions for that floating around. Uh, but the, uh, the primary description for green sand, you think about it as a water-based sand. We'll let that go. Uh, you got oil-based sands, which we use here. And then the water-based sands, which are gray, uh, which are green sand, consisting mostly of just bentonite and silica sand with some refractories included. Because you're pouring something hotter than the melting point of sand in sand, you need some kind of protective barrier. And uh, the coal dust, which is also in there serves to burn off the oxygen, leaving a better finish. And it also creates a, uh, a ribbon of soot, which is a carbon, which has a much higher melting point. And that insulates the sand against the iron and you don't have any kind of glassification along the surface. And we are pouring cast iron here, by the way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right now, he's just packing the sand down up against that mold. Yeah, and I would, because of the temperature uh, today, the water uh, amount that I got in the sand is a little less. And with that said, I'm trying to make sure we don't, we don't have any uh, crumbling effects as we go with this. Different temperatures out here require different amounts of water. And uh, what I did just now is just kind of score the sand where it doesn't laminate. It's disappointing when you make a mold, pick it up, and then half of it falls out on you, so in one big sheet. Now all we gotta do is just flush it out up here at the top of the flask. The flask is the uh, what's holding this, is that wooden piece that's holding this in. Yep. Seal the clay out here on the outside. That just kind of helps prevent anything from drying out. And what what I'm doing here, it just kind of pastes the clay. puts a puts a smear on it. Now these shouldn't fall out, but just a precautionary measure. I'm gonna. So this is, this is the flask, as Keith was showing you a while ago. This part is the drag down here, and this is the coat. And now usually when I fill, I put a, an additional reservoir 
And the only purpose of this is it's not really a riser. I put this in as a filter trap just to catch any trash that may uh, work its way down into the sprue and the runner system that we're going to cut next. And uh, here, we have to put a parting agent on here to make sure the coat and the drag will separate. If we tried to ram these two together right now without this, uh, it would bond to that and destroy the mold. If, I did, if we didn't say earlier, it's it's kind of chilly out here today. So if I feel if I sound like I'm jittery, that's why. It's it's not chilly. It's cold. Yeah, yeah. I say it is. We it did. was about 30 degrees out here this morning. Yeah. And for us southern boys, uh, that's that's it's, cold. It's, 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 we had really nice weather the other day. Uh, T-shirt weather. And my sinuses are acting up because of all this cold air. So all the change we're going through this week. And this rougher sand kind of locks the finer sand in place as we go. And I forgot to add, I don't worry about completely covering the pattern. What you see here is all going to be machine, most likely. They'll machine the face of it. We'll firm this first layer up a little bit, lock everything down. Now I'm not hitting this hard. I'm just letting the rammer do the work. Now I'm going to firm it on up. Just like the drag, I'm going to glaze this over. And what you're doing there is what? Um, just gently wrapping the pattern to get it to vibrate in the mold. Here, once it uh, it will make just a slight oversized condition in the sand as I do this in order to remove the pack. Clean. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Before I do anything else, I'm going to put a little parting dust in it just because I'm going to be blowing it off and I don't want any uh, debris sticking to any of that that just came out. So I'm going to turn it up on edge just a second to do that. Does this. Before I do anything, I'm going to go along this bottom edge and I'm going to vent all the way down through here. This will be, as long as I do this in this corner, It'll be really easy to just grind and uh, knock all that off. Won't be any 
this, this is also going to get machined. But I want to make sure I got plenty of room for all the gases to escape. Come pretty close. So now we have to cut our runner. And as I said earlier, we're putting this filter bulb in, bulb in here to capture everything coming down in this direction from the coat. The coat's going to be like this. This will be on the bottom. So your sprue is going to have the iron coming down through here. <coughs> We're going to channel it into this bulb right here. So it'll go into the bulb first and from there it will distribute down a runner I'm fixing to cut next, which is going to gate into the shoulders of the straight edge. Now once we get this uh, proofed out, I'm going to go ahead and just make a, uh, a runner that will be consistent for every pattern. But we're still in the test phase of this. I'm cutting a channel, for, it's about three quarters of an inch deep. There, I'll just lightly tap it with my finger and just press it in. In case I have any ragged sand that can come out here, I'm also going to be blowing it off. So now this is our runner, and from here I'm going to tie into the casting with a gate that channels in right here. want any kind of 90 degree intersect or you'll have a, uh, I'm going to get all the loose sand out of this. Spin it around and we're going to cut our pouring basin. Elongate it a little bit this way. I want our basin fairly big just to, because I'm going to be dumping that iron in there fast and I don't want to uh, spill it, of course, you know, I mean, it's kind of hard not to sometimes, but we want to keep this basin full the entire time we're pouring it. I may have to increase the volume a little bit. So Clark is uh, melting the iron now. He's got a furnace going. This is an oil-fired furnace. Actually burns diesel uh, fuel in it. Uh, heats it up. The temperature's high enough to melt the cast iron. Uses brake rotors. Uh, it's a high-quality cast iron that is fairly consistent. He can buy the used brake rotors uh, for really cheap from the garages around the area. Uh, it has consistent metal that he can uh, melt uh, for these uh, different projects he, he works with. But uh, that furnace will heat it up, it'll melt, and go down into a crucible, uh, which is just a container inside the furnace that holds it while it's being melted. And uh, once it gets to pouring temperature, uh, he'll pull that out. We'll show that process here in a little bit, but I thought I'd show the furnace uh, melting the cast iron. We are getting ready here to pull the crucible out of the furnace. Got a set of tongs here. We're going to pick it up. We'll set the
crucible down over here into this pouring shank that will allow Clark to pick it up. And then we'll come over and make our pour. But before we do that, got a bunch of dross on the top of this, which is just a bunch of junk that floats up to the top. We're going to pull all that off of there. I don't know, you probably guys probably can't see it in the screen, but that you can tell that stuff's just boiling up, that cast iron is. It's pretty cool. All right, here we go with the pour. Coming over to the uh, mold with the straight edge in it. And you can see it going right down in there. Look at there. And he's just going to pour the rest of it over here into this little container. And that'll just solidify. There it is. We're just going to let that sit here and cool overnight. Well, there you go, guys. I think we have our a good successful mold here. I think it, it looked like it filled up good. Yeah, I feel real good about it. Uh, it it took quite a bit and then topped off, so I'm excited to break it out of there, and we may do that later tonight Okay. or in the morning. Yeah, we'll probably wait till in the morning, uh, let it cool down good so we don't have any stress problems in it. Um, unfortunately for you guys, I'm actually going to edit this video tonight um, and get it uploaded tonight. So you won't get to see the finished product in this video, but we will share it with you later on. It'll look good. I'm sure it's going to look great. I actually am very happy with the way that uh, this this pattern molded. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that these were actually molding better than the, the other ones we've had. Well, yes, uh, but I think a lot of that has to do with the weight. Yeah. They. Uh, the the light the wooden ones which don't hold up long uh, will retain and you know the sand will retain them when you go to separate the mold uh, when you go to use the aluminum ones uh, the weight of them yeah, they makes they them keep harder falling, to get. Them, you know they keep yeah. falling out as you separate them. I got you I so, got you but uh, guys I'm I'm excited that we're getting this started and I can't wait to get these taking off where we can finish the building <laughs> yeah we, we got a lot done though uh it you know while while i was focused on the prototype here keith was working like a dog trying to get all this finished up and i i gotta say he's done a lot but <laughs> uh back to the straight edges we literally pour our heart out on these i hope you guys know that this isn't some easy process. We work for our money here. So if you... If it is a lot of work. It is. It is. And you're only seeing just a small part of it because once these come out, they have to be... There's a whole bunch of stuff has to go on. We invest a lot of time not only in the molding and the pouring process and getting the, the melt just right. Then it goes into the grind and cleanup stage, and from there it has to go through a careful process of stress relief. Yep. Uh, and then, only then, uh, it's ready to do the final cleaning because of the uh, patina it develops. It also brings uh, other impurities right on the surface there that we have to get rid of, and you have the best-looking casting money can buy. There you uh, go. So, so we, we do take great pride in our work. Those of you that have bought straight edges from us before, I think you would agree. Uh, we do take pride in what we do here. And I've heard really good things from everybody that has given me feedback on them as well as far as, you know, you know the, the castings not warping or changing after they're machined and, and scraped in. They're holding up and, and they're staying true. Right. Uh, which tells me you you got your foundry process right, you got your heat treat process right. Everything, and along with the timing of every little thing we do in the melt process, is critical. And uh, you know, there's, <laughs> it's it's very easy to mess up. So you we we have to stick to an 
exact process in the way we do this and the timing of the processes, the inoculations, everything has to be done on a certain time frame throughout that part of the process. And uh, the, we had a lot, of, a lot of issues with the 12s before we were able to release them. It took me a very long time with those. And uh, thanks to the 12s, we learned a lot of lessons, I, I hope, on the 18s here. Yeah, we are. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of people upset with me because they didn't think I was, you know, too worried about it. thing was, we were working like crazy, shut down, <laughs> trying to get these just right. We are not going to release anything. As I've said before, it would be reckless for us to uh, just go ahead and start <laughs> saying, okay, they're ready to go, and then find out we have a whole bunch of issues that we just sent out. It wouldn't make any sense to us or you to buy it until we know it's right. So, Well, there you go, guys. I think this will give you a good uh, peek at the foundry process. If you haven't seen it before, if you're interested in this foundry work, Clark has. He posts video every week of projects he's working on and the molding and pouring of different things and uh and we welcome visitors yeah uh, we get visitors all the time you're in so, morton mississippi yeah. just east of jackson yeah yeah so uh if you want to drop by and say hi we'd love to see you there you go well guys with that we're going to sign off that is going to be a wrap as always we tell you every time thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't already check out clark's channel if you haven't already go subscribe to him if you're interested in this stuff and forgive, uh, forgive me for some of the cheesy uh, <laughs> humor. Input. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I get bored and I have to kind of jazz it up a little bit. But, uh, I kind of like it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. anyway, yeah. Other than shooting UFOs down, it doesn't get too too bad. <laughs> but guys, with that, we will catch you guys on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.